In this video, we'll look at three microphone polar patterns, cardioid, figure eight, and omni. You'll learn how to read polar pattern graphs and interpret the specs. And along the way, I'll set up audio demonstrations so that you can hear each pattern for yourself. I wanna start by listening. Later on, we'll take a look at how these polar patterns were originally created. The microphone I'll be using is the Lewitt LCT640TS, and it's the perfect microphone for illustrating polar patterns because it happens to be a uniquely powerful multi-pattern microphone. Not only can you switch the polar pattern of the microphone before recording, but the polar pattern can also be manipulated after recording. The first microphone polar pattern I wanna show you is called a cardioid. And it's called a cardioid pattern because the shape resembles a heart. A cardioid microphone picks up sound best from the front and it rejects sounds coming from the rear. As you know, some cardioid microphones pick up sound from the end and some pick up sound from the side. Generally speaking, the front that you should talk into is the side with the badge or the label on it. Cardioid microphones and other directional mics are really useful when there are other instruments or noise sources in the same room. If you know that there's a noisy fan, for example, in the corner of your room and you can't turn that fan off while recording, it might make sense to point the null or the rejection point of the microphone toward that noise source so that the noise is rejected by the microphone. Cardioid mics are also really useful in live performances when instruments are in close proximity to each other and you need to capture only the sound of a particular instrument. They also help to maximize the gain before feedback in live sound by rejecting the sounds coming from the speakers. If you're recording in a room with poor acoustics, a cardioid is a very popular choice because you can use the directionality of the microphone to maximize the ratio between the direct sound and the reflected sound from walls, floors, and ceilings. In addition to using a directional microphone, you can also accomplish this by bringing the microphone closer to the sound source. Although here, you might notice the proximity effect starting to kick in. The proximity effect is a phenomenon unique to directional microphone polar patterns, wherein the low frequency is boosted as the microphone gets closer to the sound source. Now that can be a good thing if you want to emphasize the lower frequencies for that radio DJ sound, but it can also be undesirable and can result in a muddy mix down the road. So be aware of this when recording and choosing microphone placement. Cardioid is probably the most popular microphone polar pattern, especially for live sound, podcasting, and recording in less than perfect acoustic environments. Another common polar pattern is figure eight or bidirectional. Microphones with bidirectional polar patterns pick up sound best from the front and from the rear, but they actually reject sound from the sides. Just like a cardioid polar pattern, you can strategically place a bidirectional mic so that the nulls or rejection points point toward a noise source to maximize that signal to noise ratio. This is even a bit more extreme with a bidirectional mic because the on-axis response is narrower than with a cardioid pattern. So while it's more susceptible to noise from behind the microphone than a cardioid would be, it's also much better at rejecting sounds from the side. The benefits of using a figure eight microphone weren't so clear to me at first, but they're actually quite powerful. For me, bidirectional mics are my go-to for recording acoustic guitar because they help me to isolate the sound of the guitar from the breathing noise and vocals of the person playing the guitar. When recording in a nice sounding room, bidirectional mics allow for a more natural room sound and reverb than you could get from a cardioid mic. There are even some cool stereo microphone techniques that can be used with figure eights, such as bloom line and mid side. When it comes to the proximity effect, bidirectional mics are the most susceptible. You can hear that it gets pretty bassy when I'm right here up on the mic like this. So I'll often leave a little bit of space between the source and the microphone when recording with a figure eight and going for a natural sound. I probably wouldn't recommend a bidirectional microphone as your only mic, but they are a very nice addition to your mic locker. The last of the basic microphone polar patterns I wanna show you is omnidirectional. Omni microphones pick up sound evenly from all sides. So whether you're in front of the mic, beside the mic, behind the mic, on top, below, it picks up sound evenly. This can be a good thing if you're recording in a nice sounding room because it allows you to not only capture the sound of the instrument, but also the reverb and ambiance of the space. If you're recording in a room without acoustic treatment, you may find that the sound of an omnidirectional microphone can be too reverberant and too echoey. 
There are also a few things that directional microphones suffer from that omnis do not. Omnis are less susceptible to wind noise, they're less susceptible to plosives or P-pops, and they're less susceptible to handling noise. Omni microphones are also unique in that they don't exhibit the proximity effect like directional microphones do. As you place a directional microphone in closer proximity to the sound source, the low frequency response will be boosted. The low frequency response of an omnidirectional microphone is not affected by its proximity to the source, at least not due to the proximity effect of the microphone. Omnis are extremely versatile for both studio and location recording, but they're not very common in live sound. If you primarily record on location, you may even choose to work with only a pair of omnidirectional mics and get great results. However, if you plan to do mostly multi-track recording, you may want some omnis in your arsenal, but you'll probably want some directional mics too. Beyond these basic polar pattern types, there are a few others such as wide cardioid and super cardioid. These can be useful in situations where you want a bit more directionality or a bit less directionality, or in situations where the noise you'd like to reject is coming from an angle rather than from directly behind the microphone or directly from the side. A common example of this is the microphone that I just started using for my videos, the Deity S-Mic 2. This is a shotgun microphone with a super cardioid polar pattern so that the microphone can be placed further away while still maintaining a good close sound with minimal noise. When looking through a microphone's technical specs, you'll often find a graph that describes the polar pattern of that microphone. These graphs not only tell us where the microphone is most sensitive and where it's least sensitive, but they also tell us how the microphone responds to various frequencies. On this graph, the polar pattern response at various frequencies is shown with different styles of lines. This particular microphone, the Shure SM58, is less directional at some frequencies than it is at others. This highlights one important feature associated with directional microphones called off-axis coloration. A sound will be colored depending on if it's on-axis or off-axis to the microphone. In other words, the frequency response of a directional microphone isn't necessarily uniform in all directions. Low frequencies can be removed with a high-pass filter, so it's okay that mics are usually less directional at lower frequencies. But it's important to look at the off-axis response in the frequency range of the source that you're recording. Who knows, you may even use the off-axis coloration of your microphone to your advantage to slightly darken the sound of the instrument that you're recording. Let's take a closer look at how these polar patterns work. The first microphones were either omnidirectional or bidirectional. Omni microphones are sometimes called pressure microphones. For simplicity's sake, picture a microphone capsule that is sealed on the rear. Bidirectional microphones are sometimes called pressure gradient microphones. Again, this is simplified, but imagine a capsule that is open on both sides. Eventually, it was discovered that you could create a cardioid microphone polar pattern by combining a pressure mic with a pressure gradient mic. This diagram might help you to understand how this works. The pressure microphone, or omni mic, has the same polarity from all directions. We'll call this positive. The pressure gradient microphone, or bidirectional mic, has positive polarity in front and negative polarity in the rear. If sound enters from the side, it will create an equal but opposite change on both sides, resulting in a complete cancellation. Where the positive regions of both patterns align, they add together, and where the positive and negative regions align, they cancel each other out. This results in a directional pattern. Engineers then found that by varying the relative level of the omnidirectional mic to the bidirectional mic, the combined polar pattern would have an even narrower or an even wider pattern than the cardioid. And this gave us the other polar patterns that I mentioned earlier, such as super cardioid or wide cardioid. Some modern multi-pattern microphones, like the mic we've been using, are capable of switching between cardioid, figure eight, omni, and some options in between. These microphones generally operate on a different principle. Instead of combining an omni and figure eight pattern, they utilize two cardioid polar patterns, one on each side. Combining the cardioid signals creates an omnidirectional pattern. Combining both cardioid signals and reversing the polarity of one of them results in a bidirectional pattern. And using only one cardioid, the microphone operates as a simple cardioid microphone. You can also further enhance the directionality of the microphone by using interference tubes, like you'll find in the shotgun microphones I mentioned earlier, but I'll have to save that for another video. If you enjoyed this video, you're going to love the video that's on your screen now. Go ahead and click the link now and I'll see you there.